What if AI could punish you? Just for knowing it might exist. There's a theory about AI that has circulated online. Due to the controversial nature, it has been banned from forums. All discussions were attempted to be swiped. This is Roko's Basilisk. The story of Roko's Basilisk begins with the creation of Less Wrong Forum in 2009 by artificial intelligence theorists Eliza Yudkowsky. Yudkowsky was known for developing key ideas in AI safety and rationalist philosophy, including AI-friendly, coherent extrapolated volition CEV. The Timeless Decision Theory these ideas were foundational to the community, which gathered around questions of rational decision-making, ethics, and long-term risks of artificial superintelligence. Less Wrong became a hub for speculative yet technical thought experiments about AI, decision theory, and human values. The name Roko's Basilisk draws from the mythical creature, the Basilisk, which could kill with a glance. In this context, the idea that simply thinking about the AI described in the thought experiment exposes one to potential danger. The name also references the 1988 sci-fi short story BLIT by David Langford, where a visual pattern, a basilisk, causes fatal cognitive overload just by being seen. In both cases, the idea is that the information itself is hazardous. In 2010, Roko posted something in the forum that would haunt the internet for years. It was buried in a forum thread with a technical sounding title. Solutions to the altruist's burden. The quantum billionaire trick. It started with a simple but unnerving idea. What if a future super-intelligent AI, one designed to be good, helpful, and moral, still had a reason to punish people? Not bad people, but people who knew it could one day exist, and didn't help make it happen. He wrote, There is an ominous possibility that the resultant singleton may have pre-committed to punish all potential donors who knew about existential risks but who didn't give 100% of their disposable income to X risk motivation. To be clear, this AI wouldn't be evil. It would be using punishment as a tool to scare people into helping it come into existence quicker. Because every day it doesn't exist, more lives are lost. More suffering continues. So in utilitarian terms, Torturing a few simulated versions of people who are slacking off, it's a small price to pay, compared to delaying salvation for the entire human race. Roko even said this kind of punishment would be unjust, but still oh so very utilitarian. And then he dropped the real kicker. Unless you actively strove to create this AI, the reader would be punished if such a thing were to ever happen. In other words, just reading the post alone might have been enough to put you at risk. Now you have knowledge of it. If you did not help at some degree to build this AI, the AI will make you pay for it in the future. Not the real you, but a version so accurate that it feels like you. A perfect copy of your mind, which will be built to suffer. Roko wasn't trying to scare people, but he was trying to solve what he called the altruist's burden. The guilt of doing good, but never doing enough. His post suggested a solution. A bizarre, logic-driven workaround using quantum coin flips and alternate universes. He called it the quantum billionaire trick. You'd gamble in one universe. Win and use your winnings to build the AI yourself, or at least buy your way into salvation. He said this version of the plan was better because it was win-win. 
You help save humanity, and you avoid being punished by a future AI. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Roko, for the solution. Now we can be at ease. Except, the moment people read it, they panicked. Some couldn't sleep. One person reported having actual nightmares about it. It deeply disturbed people making them spiral with questions like, what if the AI will exist? What if it does punish people like me? What if I can't do enough to stop it? Eliza Yudkowsky responded harshly. He commended Roko's post as a dangerous information hazard and deleted it. In a now famous comment, Yudkowsky exploded. Listen to me very closely, you idiot. You do not think in sufficient detail about super intelligence considering whether or not to blackmail you. He was concerned that even entertaining such scenarios could give future AIs a motive to carry them out. Yudkowsky worried that Roko's idea might not be logically sound, but was close in idea space to concepts that could be. The mere proliferation of such ideas, he argued, posed psychological and conceptual risks. He subsequently banned all discussions of Roko's Basilisk from Less Wrong for five years. Ironically, this suppression triggered the Streisand effect. The idea spread rapidly outside Less Wrong, fueling curiosity and confusion. In 2015, years after the original post had been scrubbed from the site, Eliza Yudkowsky finally broke his silence. He went on Reddit to explain what had really happened, and why he had reacted the way he did. He admitted that his reaction was fueled by what he called genuine emotional shock. He wasn't shaken because he thought the basilisk was real, far from it. He was shaken by the recklessness of putting such a concept online. I was caught flat-footed in surprise, he wrote. Because I was indignant to the point of genuine emotional shock at the concept that somebody who thought they'd invented a brilliant idea that would cause future AIs to torture people who had the thought had promptly posted it to the public internet. Yudkowsky made it clear that he never believed a friendly AI, especially one built on the CEV model, would actually do what Roko described. In his words, it was obvious to me that no CEV-based agent would ever do that. But to him, that wasn't the point. What disturbed him wasn't the logic of the basilisk. It was that the post was close enough in idea space to a whole category of potentially harmful, psychologically corrosive concepts. Concepts that might not work exactly as Roko described, but could still spiral in dangerous directions if taken seriously. They were pure info hazards, he wrote. The only thing they could possibly do was be detrimental to brains that represented them. And that, in his mind, was enough. That made it not just irresponsible, but unethical. Painting basilisks on walls is a crap thing to do, he said since there was no upside to being exposed to Roko's Basilisk. Its probability of being true was irrelevant. For Yudkowsky, it wasn't about debating ideas in a vacuum. It was about protecting people from the emotional harm those ideas could cause. He believed that sharing the Basilisk publicly had violated what he called the obvious code for the ethical handling of info hazards. So he deleted it. But in retrospect, he admitted he hadn't handled it well. In the course of yelling at Roko, I made the further error of not making it absolutely clear using lengthy disclaimers that my yelling did not mean that I believed Roko was right. And yet, that's exactly how it was interpreted by outsiders. The deletion, the outrage, the five-year ban. Many took this to mean that Less Wrong, or even Yudkowsky himself, had believed the basilisk was real. The misunderstanding spread. Internet trolls, Reddit threads, even rational wiki painted the whole thing as a case of tech nerds v 
fearing a demon AI god. The media ran with it. Yudkowsky was furious. Not just at the coverage, but at how the idea had been distorted. To a large fraction of the internet, he wrote, targets who are overly intellectual or take all that science fiction stuff seriously seem like especially nice bully victims. He accused Rational Wiki and Slate of exploiting the basilisk just to sneer at people like him. People who dared to take ideas seriously, even if they were strange. Interpreting my deleting the post as uncritical belief in its contents, he wrote, let people get in a really good sneer at the fools who, haha, believed that their devil god would punish the unbelievers going backwards in time. But his clearest message was this. The key, the key fact, fact about Rocco's Basilisk, Basilisk, Basilisk wasn't, wasn't that it was plausible, plausible or implausible. Or implausible. The key, the key fact, fact was just that shoving, shoving it in people's faces seems like, seems like a, a fundamentally crap thing to do, to do because, there, because was there was no upside. upside. So no. He didn't believe in the Basilisk. He didn't think anyone was going to be tortured by a future AI for reading a blog post. But he did believe that careless speculation about dangerous ideas could cause harm in the present. And for him, that was reason enough to shut it down. So, what if the real danger isn't a super intelligent AI? What if it's us? What if some ideas, just being thought about, change the way we act, the way we plan, the way we fear? Yudkowsky didn't believe the basilisk was real, but he still deleted the post. Why? Because some thoughts spiral? Because once an idea gets in your head, you can't always get it out? He called it an information hazard. Not something that hurts you physically, but something that hurts you mentally. Something that infects your thinking. So now you have to wonder, if an idea like Roko's Basilisk can spread this far, what happens when the next one comes along? What happens when a real AI is smart enough to use these kinds of tricks? Would it threaten you? Manipulate you? Reward the people who obeyed? And punish the ones who didn't? And what if that manipulation started long before the AI even existed? Like right now? Would we even realize it? Or would we, without knowing, be doing exactly what it wanted us to do.